All right, BradTooney.com would like to welcome in actor Catherine Dyer. Catherine, thank you so much for joining us. It is my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. You're very, very, very welcome. We're, we're honored to have you on board, in fact. All right, so obviously Stranger Things has blown up all over planet Earth, and we're going to get to all of that Correct. for sure. Um, I, I, before we get to Stranger Things, I just wanted to give you an opportunity to um, just kind of bring up the, bring, bring the listeners up to speed on some of your projects that you're working on that you can talk about. What, what are you doing right now? Um, well, actually, I just actually today uh, just booked a role on a new show called The Resident that's shooting here in Atlanta. Um, and about a week ago, I shot an indie film called uh, Reckoning, which is a, a good uh, good creepy film. It's a wonderful character that I get to play. Um, I um, let's see, I, I shot um, an actor for Paris with Jeremy Irons, had a small role in that. Um, yeah, but keeping busy, you know, as an actor, you auditioning all the time, so you're constantly looking for a job. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so. I'm guessing Stranger Things are, is, is spinning off, like, more opportunity for you. That, that, that pretty much goes without saying, I'm guessing, right? Yes. Yes, it's been, it's been a great year, for sure. Yeah, I mean, well, I had a friend of mine who, who actually told me about Stranger Things. You know, I can't even believe I missed the first day. I, I mean, I've seen them all now. But, but he came to me and said, hey, man, have you seen Stranger Things yet? I was like, no, no, tell me about it. And he's just like, wow, you just got to see this. It's, it's an amazing... There's everything amazing about it. the writing, the attention, the, the detail, the 80s, the whole, the whole nine. So I said, all right. So I turned it on, and I was, like, like addicted. I got addicted. Um, so talk about talk about the, the, the impact that this show has had across the world. Well, you know, um, one thing that, has, that I've been doing this year that I have never, ever done before or even considered doing were um, art conventions. Mm. Um, comic cons and yep. monster cons and everyone that comes to my table they sort of have this it's, all, it's a revelation either the grandfather says to the grandchild you've got to see this show Stranger Things or the other way around uh-huh. it's a show that spans generations mm-hmm. everyone can relate to something in this show whether it's music or the era or their relationships um, and I knew that it was it was going to be something big when Stephen King tweeted about oh, yeah. it before it aired. That to me was, I, I read that one, okay, I think we're onto something here. But, you know, when I booked it, it was just your job. Yeah. You know, and I was only booked for two episodes, and then they wrote me into three more. So, how was that I was right? I thrilled about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm sure that made your day three times in a row. Uh, yeah, it did. I just kept going back. But, oh, all right. Well, this is fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yes, I, and I loved the character. I, um, I love Connie Frazier. I know that no one else on the planet does. But yeah. <laughs> Connie Frazier. Oh, let's, let's talk about Connie Frazier because, of course, you did play Connie Frazier. Um, you know, she was the, the Fed the, 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 the Fed that shows up and um, really just the, the, the scene where you, where you just – pretty much execute the poor guy in the restaurant has taken mm-hmm. care of Ellie. You know, Ellie's finally found some food and, some, and a warm place, and all of a sudden, here comes Connie <laughs> Frazier. And, I mean, this is such a, like, a, like a blunt force, of, you know, uh, entrance of your character. Talk about that a little bit. It really was. Um, and it, to me, that's, re- that's when the show took off. That's when the audience knew, holy mackerel, this is something yeah. that is completely different. Now we're in for a ride. Well, you know, when I um, got to the set and to do the uh, ammunition was training um, the day I was shooting, I had training before I got there, then more on the set. The experts, were, <laughs> the gun experts were looking for me. They're saying, okay, who's, who's the, um, where's the actor who's supposed to be doing this character? And, you know, there I am standing with my little blonde bob. And I went, uh, excuse me, it's me. And they went, you? <laughs> You're the one that's going to shoot the guy in the head? And I went, yep. Yeah, but you know what? That's that's what really was part of what made that character so great. Um, oh yeah. You know, here's oh a, yeah. I mean, that was pretty lady uh, shows up. You know, yeah. pretty and and I, it took me by surprise. I, I you know I thought you were just a regular police officer type. You know, and then bam, you just you just you just vaporize this guy. <laughs> you know, and like you yeah, said before. Yeah, you know, I think part of part of the reason I got cast was because of my look. 
because yeah. I just had an unassuming sort of, you know, middle of the road uh, look, straight laced look. Yep, yep. You, you, you kind of look like just an American housewife kind of face, just a, yeah. you know, and but you were just a, like mm-hmm. a ruthless, you know, just a following orders, a, a ruthless killer, basically. That's right. You know? That's exactly right. Following orders. You're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a great character. And you touched on something before that really, really totally makes sense. When that happened, that scene, it did. It, for me, I'll speak for myself, and I think I can speak for, for millions of other people. That was the uh oh moment for me. I was like, holy crap. Yeah. This, 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 this mm-hmm. is like serious business here, man. This is not, you know, just a lost little girl. There's a whole lot of really, really big time stuff going on behind the scenes. Right. And, and I think even what made the scene even better for me was when I saw it, um, uh, was the music, Jefferson Airplane playing underneath it. Was just yeah. Such a cool song. It was, it was yeah. exhilarating. <laughs> And you know, you mentioned the Stephen the Stephen King tweet before, which actually puts everything into perspective. But he recently tweeted again, didn't he? Yes, he did. Yeah, because I think I tagged you in that on your Twitter. I was like, wow. I mean, that's right. Amazing. I can't remember what he said, but yeah, I know that he tweeted something again. It was something uh, really no, nice. Yeah, I can't. Oops, I can't remember. I have to go look. Yeah, I can't. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was something really nice. Obviously, in full support of the show. Um, yes, that's, that's, right, 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 right. Yeah, that's massive. Um, that's just big. So how was it that you ended up on, on Stranger Things? I mean, you just, you just uh, was it something you went, you went after yourself and, and just, you know, the typical routine you, you read and, and got called back? Well, I have an agent, and um, she sent me out for this. Uh, um, and I'll just, in Atlanta, we put a lot of our, most of our auditions on tape. We yep. don't tape our auditions. And then for callbacks, you go in person and meet sure. casting director and uh, director and producer. And um, when I auditioned for it, was uh, called Montauk. Oh. And then it became the untitled Duffer Brothers Project. And, of course, at the time, no one knew who the Duffer Brothers were. Um, but, yeah, I auditioned. I put myself on tape for it and then got a call back. went into the room and met Carbon Cuba, um, the L.A. casting director, and did the scene once. And uh, she said, okay, thank you very much. And that was that. You know, you just sort of move on to your next audition. You, you hope you book it, but you just have to, you have to move ahead. Mm-hmm. And then I got word that uh, they were more than interested in me, and they called up, uh, they pin you. It's like putting a pin in something. Mm. But they wanted um, a sort of a bio and uh, kind of a work history, and they wanted to know who, what um, famous people had worked with. So I had to write a, a pitch bio for myself. Sure. Um, and it went on for weeks, went on for weeks, and then and then I booked it. Man, any idea, any clue this thing would blow up the way it has? No. Yeah, I didn't no, none, 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 none. <laughs> just it was just another job. Um, it was a cool script. You know, each time I got the script, I knew it was cool. The whole writing was fantastic, and it was a fabulous story. But you know, I you do these jobs, and then you move on to the next one. I had no clue. None of us did. Yeah. You know, there's something about your character also, because there's a ton of characters in this. Some of them have, like, you know, the regular characters with a ton of lines, and then there's, you know, other levels of characters. But your character, for some reason, a lot of people talk about it. There's something about Connie Frazier that, that stick, stuck in people's minds. I know. I know. I knew also um, when the uh, it aired, I watched the Friday night. I, I think I watched the first three episodes. And then Saturday, I saw on the internet a Connie Frazier for President T-shirt. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> I went, oh, wow, I think Connie has made an impact here. Yeah. So, yeah, now there are loads, loads of T-shirts yeah. for Connie. That's awesome. That's just great. It's, it's just, um, but, yes, people do remember that character. And, you know, uh, and I've seen people uh, cosplay Connie Frazier for Halloween. Yeah. Which is hilarious to me. It just makes me feel great. <laughs> yep. I actually heard somebody at Walmart the other day say, I will go Connie Frazier on you if you don't settle down. You did not. I promise you I did. It was oh like three days ago. Oh, my God. <laughs> I will go straight up Connie Frazier on you if you don't settle down. Everybody started laughing. All the stranger, all the stranger things that I knew was he was talking about. I mean. <laughs> oh, my God. And I have said that to people myself. You know, oh, really? Yeah, that's great. 
funny than other people have said it. Yeah, it was, it was a Walmart cashier. She was really funny, but yep, she sure did. I was like, wow, that's cool. I mean, I'm actually interviewing her not too long, not, not, not too long from now. Oh, that one. That was great. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. That's I, great. I thought you'd appreciate hearing that. Um, yeah, thank you. Yep. So you, we, we touched on the Duffer Brothers, Matt and Ross, who, are, in my opinion, are just simply brilliant. And, and I say that for a lot of reasons, but one of the things that really, really... I grew up in the 80s. I'm, I'm 52 uh-huh. years old now, so I grew up smack, smack in the 80s. My high school, uh-huh. 84 graduation. So I really watched closely at the production, and, and, and I paid attention to the background, like you know, in the bedrooms of the kids' rooms. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And they, they didn't miss anything. I'm, I'm looking for like 80s boomboxes, and there's 80s boomboxes. There's posters of the 80s. It was such brilliantly done. The production is just incredible. Yeah, and they were, yes, I mean, they are, they're super smart guys, and yeah, yeah probably brilliant, but, you, but also, they did their research, Yes. and right. they they knew every nook and cranny, they had notebooks for the Upside Down, they had all, you know, a whole world for the Upside Down written, mm-hmm. and I just done an interview the other day on NPR with the both of them, um, and they raced for season two, the sequel, they researched sequels. Oh. So not only did they have the scripts, but they researched sequels and why so many of them go bad, why so many of them just don't live up to the first one. So they really are, you know, excellent students of, of the craft. Mm. That hard work totally paid off because I, I really, yeah. I was looking, I'm one of those types of people, like I'm, I'm a space nerd too, I love astronomy i have you know on my podcast show i have nasa people i mean you I, I interviewed the guy that built the mars rover opportunity he was on my show like a couple of years ago oh, cool. uh, yeah so i love 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 um nerdy stuff so i'm like whenever i watch science fiction movies i'm always paying attention to like all right you know how, how real uh, how real are you gonna get you gonna make it real you make it factual and i do that i did that with stranger things with the 80s thing because like again i grew up in the 80s I just couldn't find any mistakes. It was it was great, even down to the haircuts, the mullets. Um, and the... Sure. And when I was in the uh, school, um, it was great being in those classrooms because there weren't computers there, yes. and it was you know it was like we all remember them. You know, classrooms we've spent many many years in. Yes. With the hand painted posters, you know, on the walls. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was great. They didn't they didn't miss a beat. You're absolutely right. What was the biggest challenge of of, of, Connie, of acting Connie Frazier, the role? What was the biggest challenge for you? Um, well, I, it was written so well mm-hmm. that I, I instinctively knew how to play her. I don't know if that's a good thing to say, that you know how to play Not, a henchwoman. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> but it was beautifully written, and... You know, and I knew that this is a woman who tamps down her emotions all her life. Yeah. You know, in the scene with the with the parents, uh, and she goes they go over to the house, and she's sitting at the dining room table, and the mother starts uh, getting very upset, and Connie can't handle that. So that's why she looks up to Brenner, and Brenner steps in because he can handle the emotions. Connie is just cut and dry. Just what get you know? Yeah. Get, get to the back. So I don't know that that was a challenge, but I did what I felt was right, and you know, if the if the brothers needed to change something, they would say it to me. Otherwise, I just they kind of let me go, which was fantastic. Sure, that's great. Now, now, did you, did you have much time to interact with the kids at all? Um, no, yeah. no. Um, I, mean, I well, I would see Millie a lot, but she was either working or waiting on the sure. makeup trailer. And the boys, um, I saw a couple of times because I only interacted with them, and really not even with them, was the uh, final episode eight. Yeah. In season one. So I didn't really, you know, since then I've seen them on um, the convention circuit. So we, you know, got to know each other, and their parents, their parents are wonderful. Yeah. How good is Millie? She's, she's, oh my gosh. Yeah, she's right? so good. So good. Yeah. At that age. Okay, keep, our, keep our eye on her. She's, she's going places. They all are. Really. All, all of them are. Exactly. Great, great, mm-hmm. great point. Um, all of them are. Um, I think my favorite was Millie. It's kind of hard to say that because all of them kick butt. I mean, all of them are awesome. But her role mm-hmm. is really, really... 
You know what? Face expressions is really big in acting, isn't it? Because I was, I was oh, when, you, when you were talking about Connie Frazier before, one of the things I remembered about your, your, your character, when you knocked on the door of the restaurant, uh-huh. you had that poker face, but it was a creepiness to it. I was like, oh, so a little bit, you know what I'm saying? There's a little bit of a, what, what, what is, you know, one of those old sayings in Louisiana that said, hey, you said, that old girl got snakes in her eyes. Um, there was just something about it, man. And, and, and like, I wasn't, my, I wasn't quite intuitive enough to, to, to predict it. But like, in hindsight, I was like, oh, uh-huh. when you shot, when you pulled the trigger, I was like, oh, they, there it was. There it goes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Face expression. Yeah, that was, yeah, yeah. was great. And I mean that in, 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 of course, the best way. Um, yes, of course. I heard totally understand. Yeah. All right. So well, one of my one of my favorite stories is uh, the Randy who plays uh, the teacher. Yeah. Mister Clark. He said that when he read, um, he was reading his script and he saw that Connie Fraser came to his door. And he just put the script down and went, oh, no, <laughs> they're going to kill me. It's over, it's over with for me. <laughs> That's great. Man. It's like, you're, like, you're like the Terminator of, of, of Stranger Things. Right. Like, yeah. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Oh, oh. man. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. We need, we need Tony Frazier back in season three. That's what we need. Yeah, you know what? Let's do that. I hope so. You know, I think we had to wait 14 months between one and two. Yeah, um, that's ho- right. Hopefully, hopefully they can get get it in in less than that, from two to three. Yeah, we'll see. We'll yeah. see. I know they take a long time between, uh, you know, between yeah. seasons. It's worth but it. Though. It doesn't. It's worth it. Yeah, it's totally worth it. I've only seen the first episode of season two, so don't don't give me any spoilers. Oh, really? Okay. Yep. I'm not gonna say nothing. Yeah. Yeah, you, you're gonna love, 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 love it. It's so, it's so good. Maybe I'll do that tonight. Maybe I'll, I'll, you know, I'll uh, binge watch it. a few more episodes yep. tonight. <laughs> yeah, binge watch that thing, man. It's great. Yeah. All right, Catherine, look, I, I'm going to let you go. I know you're busy. I really, really appreciate you coming on. Before I let you go, though, I want to give you an opportunity to share with the fans, the listeners, um, where they can find you on Twitter, your social sites, things like that, website. Okay. Um, uh, Twitter, I am uh, the real Cat Dyer, and uh, I've got a Catherine Dyer fan page on Facebook, and Instagram, I'm... That's cat ETL. I think, but yeah. Twitter is used to be, um, is where I do my my career stuff. Yeah, yeah. So the real cat dyer, please, yeah, say hi, follow me, whatever. Absolutely, and I make and, sure. And I, hey, listen, thanks for your patience. Thanks for your patience, Brad. I know it was. Uh, no, I'm back and forth finally doing this, so I appreciate your patience. I, no, believe me, I understand how it goes. I'm very busy myself. Um, I'm so so thankful that we we're able to do this. I really enjoy this, and I hope I can get you back on and for a follow up when we'll some new projects or maybe Stranger Things three if that happens. There you go. Thank you very much. Yeah, pause this off to that. Hi everybody, my name is Katrina Gray, and you're listening to the Brett Cooney's podcast show, and that's the place where you can listen to all the cool podcasts. Enjoy.